Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. So today uh, we got a little quick project. Hopefully this won't be too big of a deal, but um, I recently purchased uh, some little blocks here. Or, uh, it was actually, I got a, several different things that hold little fixtures that hold C5 uh, collets. And I particularly am needing this square one right here for a job I got coming up where I need to do some uh, keyways where that are, I need to cut two keyways at 180 degrees apart. So let's see, let me grab my part. So here you go. My, my plan is, is that we will, you know, put this uh, in the fixture, tighten it up, put this in the vise on the, on the milling machine uh, here uh, and basically cut the first keyway. Then I can flip this over and because this block is square, my second key will be perfectly aligned. So that's the idea. So anyway, I, bought, I found a, a, some of these on eBay. They were actually, like I said, I got this square one. Uh, there's a hex block here, which will come in real handy for doing a, like a hex head bolt. I've done those before and had to use some kind of funky setups. This will make that job much easier. Uh, and there were a couple other little fixtures in there that look like maybe we're on a, a, some, some grinding stuff. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, we'll find the use for them. But here's the issue. The little uh, piece that screws on the back to tighten this on. Uh, try that again after dropping it. Thank goodness it hit my mat. But anyway, this screws onto the back and this is what tightens it on. And of course, you would tighten this up and that's what draws the collet ch shut. Well, it, it's got a, a hex head in the back here, and uh, you you know that's what you would use to tighten it. Well, again, the way I'm gonna use this, I've got a shaft that's gonna be going through here, so I need to have this open in the back. So basically, I've gotta make a special nut uh, that will be used with these. Uh, this is, uh, the thread on this is, on the, on the collet, it says inch and a quarter, 20. Uh, so basically I'm going to make a little round, I'm going to make a round nut, I think I'm going to knurl it. It's going to be the same diameter of this, maybe just a tad smaller than this because uh, that is a little bit close to hitting uh, on a couple of these fixtures, but um, it clears but barely. Uh, but I'm going to knurl it so that I can do it by hand, then I'm probably going to also put a couple of uh, slots in here, probably just a pair of slots where I can put a wrench on there and tighten it up. I'm not going to worry about doing a hex. I'm uh, just going to put two on there. Usually you, you would tighten this up in a vise or something so you're not really having to worry about being able to move your wrench around to different places. So I got a piece of stock over here in the lathe. Uh, we're going to just turn it down just a little bit below the nominal size, clean it up, we'll go ahead and knurl it while it's solid and then we'll come in there, punch a hole in there, thread it and I go to the mill and and I cut the slots in it but that'll be the job for the day, got to make a part so we can finish making a part. Uh, isn't that the life of being in a machine shop? Here we go. So we're going to start by, uh, of course, facing the front here. Uh, I'm going to turn this down probably about 50, 60 thousandths undersize. Again, I just want to have a little bit of clearance on there compared to the other one. Uh, and then we'll get out the knurling tool. I want this to be probably about an inch, the actual nut to be about an inch long. Uh, so we'll probably uh, actually turn it down a little bit past that so we get good knurling on there. So we've got the knurling tool set up over here now and uh, this is a, actually the first time I've used this knurling tool. This is an Armstrong uh, knurling tool, it just fits into a, a regular tool holder on the lathe here. But it actually has three different sets of uh, knurling rollers in here for different uh, size knurls. And what I really like about this one is, is on my old one you had to really adjust this uh, thing up and down to get it where it's just absolutely perfect and both the wheels are engaging at the same time. But this one, because this actually floats, you've got a little bit of leeway. So when you feed this thing in here, it's going to find center. Yeah, you want to get it close, uh, but it will find center on its own. Uh, so you don't have to worry so much about being so finicky with getting it just right. So uh, I'm going to put a real coarse knurl on this. Uh, 
Uh, I want to be able to get some grip on it with my hands as I'm uh, uh, tightening it up by hand. And uh, then we'll have the flats that we can further use uh, to tighten it on there with a the wrench. But uh, anyway, we're going to go with the, the coarse knurls. Knurling is cutting, so you want to use oil with this. And we will just kind of we'll feed these in until they're just touching. And then we'll come on in and let her go. start but that's not deep enough so we're just going to do it again and I'm going to feed it in about 20 thousandths farther this time. It's getting better, but I'm still not happy with it. We're going to go a little deeper. I want a good heavy knurl on this. Good, I like that. I'll zoom you in here so you guys can see that. All right, so we've got a nice knurled finish here. You know, one thing when you're knurling, you can go back and, and go over again. You got a good knurling tool, it should pick back up on the, the previous round, and you normally don't get a lot of cross uh, knurling. At least I don't, I haven't ever had that problem, but that's a good surface that I can grip with my fingers now very happy with that. So now we're going to just chamfer that front edge. I like that. I think I'm going to hit this with a file. There's just a little bit of an edge on that knurling. And this kind of needs to be rolled over. good on my fingers. Go ahead and punch a starter hole in here. Start out by center drilling. Step here, we're going to go ahead and part this off. Slow the lathe down a little bit. I just like to do my parting at a little bit lower RPM.
I've flipped the uh, part around in the lathe, and I'm just going to real lightly face this side, get a good smooth surface, and uh, we're going to go ahead and finish boring this out uh, to the final size. So we drilled that hole to one inch. We need to be at about one inch, uh, 175 thousandths. So I've got my boring bar set up and we'll just uh, bore it to the final size here. Uh, we'll just start out with a light pass, clean it up. We're set up for threading now. This is internal threading here, so I've got an internal boring bar with an internal threading insert. This is a lay-flat insert. Uh, we're going to be doing 20 threads per inch. I've already made a scratch pass, verified we're good to go. Uh, you know, doing internal threading is pretty much identical to doing uh, externals, except on the uh, compound, instead of coming in this way, we got it reversed the other way. So we'll be pulling the cutter toward us and that will be pulling it in and we'll only be cutting on the front edge of the tool. Exactly like external threading, but again, just turn your compound uh, over to the other angle here and you should be ready to go. So uh, we'll be uh, threading this, let's uh, go to town. but it's not quite there yet. pretty good. I think I'm going to do a scratch pass through there. Uh, I think we're going to be right on the money. So with the scratch pass, I'm really not feeding it anymore. I'm just making the same cut I did before. But you always have a little bit of spring in your, uh, in your tool. So it is still cutting on this pass. It's just taking a very light cut. See what we got now. There we go. That's real good. Very happy with that fit. So I'm set up in the mill now and I'm gonna mill two flats on this and uh, we want them to be where you can fit an inch and three-eighths wrench on it and I've made some measurements calculated my outside diameter calculated the, the size I'm going to and uh, determined how far I need to move my table and we're about ready to go. I'm going to raise my table up until I touch off
Well, I just looked up and realized the camera was off. Sorry about that, but we got the first side of this uh, milled out, got a good flat on there, and now we're gonna flip it over, and I'll show you how we're gonna index that, and we'll do the other side. What we're gonna do to index, I flipped it around. I've got an adjustable parallel here, and I'm just gonna slide this up underneath here and raise it up until it's contacting that real good all the way around, all the way across, and then tighten this up. And what that should do is make this uh, one side parallel to the other, which is all we're after here. So we should be ready to go again. I'm gonna go back down to zero on my height. So our first pass should be about right there. And we'll nibble away at it again. That's what I want right there. All right guys, so here we go. I got the, the block in here. We take our collet, slide it in. Um, before, this was the uh, original nut. And again, it has a hex in the end uh, to tighten it up on, uh, which works good if you got something short in there. But in this case, we need something going all the way through and uh, that doesn't lend itself. So uh, we made this nut, that threads up on there and uh, we will slide our part through the fixture. I'll tighten this up as much as I can by hand and then using the wrench we can finish tightening this up and now I can come in here cut a keyway turn this over in the vise cut my second keyway and they will be 180 degrees apart so there we go So there we go guys, another example here of uh, making something for the shop. Uh, you know, I guess I could have probably gone and maybe found one of these commercially made, spent, you know, 20, 30 bucks for it plus shipping and then have to wait two or three days. The beauty of having your own machine shop is when you need something like this, you just make it. And uh, that's what we did here. Uh, now uh, this piece is gonna be a lot more versatile to me. I'm gonna still keep the original nut and it will come in handy as well i'm sure but uh i really like the design of this this is going to work great so there you go guys uh, another quick video for you i hope you enjoyed that and uh we'll catch you guys next time